this morning will be from Matthew chapter 11, uh, starting at verse number 27. Matthew chapter 11, verse 27, and terminating at the end of the verse. And God's word reads on this wise. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and most importantly, for those of who, us who do his word and his will. Good morning, family. Let us bow. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, we come before you to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to have food, shelter, and this life. We honor, we love, and we praise you. Bless everyone on the highways and byways that's in route to the church, that they too will be safe from all harm and return back to their final destination, the same as they left, if not better. Bless all those who are sick, wounded, afflicted, addicted, incarcerated, and especially those that are bereaving, dear Lord. Bless our minister that will come before us, that he may crown our head with knowledge, and we will walk in your steps and do your will. These favors and all of us in prayers, we ask in your Son, Jesus Christ's name, amen. Hey, Matt, I want to say good morning to the church once more. Good Hope everyone is doing well. It's November the 10th already. Hard to believe how fast time is flying by. Amen. Amen. But the Lord has blessed us to still be here to enjoy it, so that's a wonderful thing. Lord, help me to walk right while I run this. Well, I'm singing, Lord, help me to walk right while I run this. Oh, Lord, will help me to just walk right while I run this race. Cause I don't want to run this race in vain. Lord, just help me to talk right while I, how oh, I'm singing, Lord. Just help me to talk right while I run this race. Oh, Lord, just help me to just to talk right while I run this race. Cause I don't want to run this race in vain. Well, Lord, just help me to preach right while I, I'm singing, Lord. Just help me to preach right while I run this Oh, Lord, just help me to oh, well to preach right while I Cause I don't want to run this race in vain Amen We had a song that was requested one of Dr. Harrison's favorites. I don't possess houses or land, fine clothes or jewelry, mm -hmm, my Lord. Sorrow and pain in this old world my life seems to be we 
But church, I've got this cry all in my life. And he makes me happy, my Lord. And Christ is all, he's all in all in this world to me. Christ is all, yes, he's everything to me. I'm singing he's all. Church, you know he rules the land and the sea. My God is all. Yes, and with will, will, nothing can be. Uh, and Christ is all. He's all in all in this world to me. There are some folk who look and they yearn for this world's riches. Mm -hmm, my Lord. There are some folk who look for power and position too. But church, see, I've got this Christ. He's all in my life. And he makes me happy, mm -hmm, my Lord. And Christ is all. He's all in all in this world to me. Christ is all. Yes, he's I'm singing he's all. Church, you know he rules the land and the sea. My God is all. Yes, and without him nothing can be. And Christ is all. He's all in all. In this world to me, Christ is all. Yes, he's everything to me. I'm singing he's all. Church, you know he rules the land and the sea. My God is all. Yes, and without him nothing can be. And Christ is all. He's all in all. In this world, he's all this world to me. Man. I'm going to trade my earthly home for right here. Well, Christ left to prepare a mansion for his children in the Yes, and I'll join him in that land where tear no a hand I'll receive mansion robe. Lord, I want a mansion, a robe, and a crown in glory there that love will always so let let just let me will in your throne surround Lord please reserve mansion road church will the weather there is always fair there's sunshine day and night will no cold and no rain will fall there 
for the sun shines ever. Yes, and I'll need no heavy garment, cause I'll just wrap when I receive my mansion robe. Lord, I want well a mansion, a robe, and a crown in glory there that love will always up. So won't you let church let me will in your throne surround. Lord, please reserve mansion road. Well, my head is bound and bloody now from the work that I've tried to do. But one day I'll be rewarded with a crown so bright and church will I wear a smile so bright for there'll be no cause for a frown when I receive my mansion robe. Lord, I want a mansion, a robe, and a crown in glory there that love will always uh, so won't you let, let me pull into your throne so round. Lord, please reserve mansion rule. Come on, bass. Sing. Lord, I want a brand new mansion, a robe and a crown in glory. There I know that peace and love will always Abound forever, let me be among the saved to your throne. Surround, Lord, please reserve mansion room. Lord, I want, want a mansion, a robe, and a crown in glory there, that love will always up so won't you let let me will in your throne surround lord please reserve mansion robe, robe and crown lord please reserve my man mansion robe, robe and crown lord Please reserve my mansion, mansion, robe and crown. Man. Let the church say hallelujah. hallelujah. Truly God has blessed us today. Beautiful day, sun is shining, amen. It's not raining, it's not snowing, amen. And we know who is sitting on the throne in heaven, amen. It's a beautiful day. God did not forget about you. He woke you up this morning, Say amen. And so once again, we come together as the body of Christ. I don't want you to say that you came here as a spectator. Because we are all connected by the Holy Spirit. And everybody in the body has a function. Everybody in the body has something to do for the body. I used to have a, a, a co-worker who would say, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose. What matters is that you get suited up. What matters is that you show up in your uniform. What matters is that you are ready to play. Now you may be on the bench like me, but what matters is that you came to play. You were prepared to play. 
You are on the team. You may not be Michael Jordan, but there's only one Michael Jordan, so don't feel bad. Talking to our young brother Chase this morning in Bible class, and he said, I asked him how did he like high school and was he participating in extracurricular activities? And he said, tomorrow is the big day. Right. He's going out for the basketball team. Right. I said, well, you'll make it. Amen. You'll make it. The important thing, though, is that you suit up. And you say, I'm ready. I'm ready to work hard for the Lord. And so the, the Bible describes you as, in, second, in 1 Peter 2, chapter, verses 5 through 10, you are also like lively stones. Amen. Lively stones. Didn't say spectators. The spectators, they just come to watch, observe. But lively stone, they say hallelujah, amen. amen. They don't care what people may say when they stand up and lift their hands to the sky. Did you tell me this week, Dr. Harrison, that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof? The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. You are lively stone built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore, it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. We hope, trust, and pray that there may be someone here in the sanctuary today who does not know the Lord and the pardoning of their sin, and that you will hear the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and that you will turn your heart towards the Lord, and that you will make the good confession that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, and that the old Adam will be crucified. And that you will be raised to walk in the newness of life. We know in this world, we're all going to experience some good days and some bad days. But when you look behind you, and you say, how could I have made it through this week? There's some drama this week. How could I have made it through this week? Had it not been for the Lord. I didn't make it this far because I'm so handsome, articulate, intelligent. I made it this far because I'm just a lump of dirt walking through this world, but I am a child of God. I am a child by faith in Jesus Christ. So church, I hope you didn't come just to be a spectator. I hope you came to be a lively stone. I hope you came to give God some glory and some praise. I hope you came to confess your sins. For the Bible says that 
There is none righteous, no, not one. For we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I hope you came to give a witness, a testimony of praise to honor and glory our Father in heaven. And so I promise you I won't be long, but I hope to be strong. Talking a little bit about this week and that I was looking at my Bible and I wanted to see what does the Bible have to say about the type of week that we've experienced this past week. And so I need to just say that some of what I will say it really was in my last sermon that all of us will experience storms in life. The Bible tells us the same storm in Matthew chapter 5 around verse 48 comes to the righteous as well as to the unrighteous. The rain, the sun, they come to the evil and the good. Storms can come to us in all shapes and sizes. Storms can even come in the shape of Donald J. Trump. Storms can either make us or break us, depending on how we respond. Trials, tragedies, tribulation can either be a stepping stone or a stumbling block depending on our heart's response. You don't mind if I repeat myself a little bit from the last sermon that I, I preached in October. Storms expose areas of weakness in our lives. Trials reveal our true character. Storms can bring good to us if we have the right attitude. Amen. Amen. And don't be afraid of a storm, church, because the Bible says that all things work together for good Amen. to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Are we called according to the Lord's purpose? But we need to be strong and of a good courage. As Moses told Joshua. We need to be like Joshua as Joshua told the children of Israel. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so I'm talking to the lively stones today. I'm hoping that everybody seated here in this sanctuary is a lively stone. Amen. And if you're a visitor, well, we can understand why you're just a spectator. But if you're a visitor, I just want you to know that you came to the right church. Amen. Amen. So just for a few minutes, if the Holy Spirit will allow, what would life be? like for us without God. His love, what would life be for us without God's love? Well, the Bible, I have to point out, has something to say in John chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting what would life be for us without God's word? In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son 
who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. What would, the, what would our lives be like if we had to face storms alone without the Holy Spirit? Say amen when you can. If the Holy Spirit grabs you, don't quench the Spirit. If the Holy Spirit causes you to stand up and shout, don't quench the Spirit. If the Holy Spirit causes you to walk up and down these aisles, and wipe away a tear from your eyes. Don't quench the spirit. Where would we be? What would life be like for us without God's grace? Think about it just for a minute. Paul said that your grace in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 9, he said, your grace is sufficient for thee. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Is anybody standing in need of God's grace this morning? It's all right to say amen. Does anybody stand in need of strengthening their faith? This morning, our faith is tested every day. Your faith was tested on Wednesday morning. You woke up. You turned on the TV or you got your little iPad or your tablet. Looked at the news. Listened to the radio in the car. On your way to your job. And what you thought was going to happen was that an announcement would be made that the president-elect was the first woman ever to be elected. But God did not have it that way. We are going to have to endure a test. Some of us right now are going through a test. I don't know the reason why what happened Tuesday night happened, but we woke up Wednesday morning and we got to deal with the situation that we find ourselves in. And when we read our Bible, we see that God's children don't give up. God's children don't give out. God's children do not give in, but God's children pray. God's children have faith that everything is going to be all right. Then what Isaiah wrote is, wait, I say, wait on the Lord. Everything is going to be all right. But what would life like for us if we didn't have faith. God wants us to have an obedient faith. God wants us to pray, knowing that he's going to work everything out on his time schedule. You know the saying, God is an on-time God. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. I don't know what tomorrow may hold, church, but I know who holds all of my tomorrow. God has got the whole world in his hand, and God wants you to hold on to your faith. We must believe, obey, and abide. Didn't I tell the church that Wednesday night? We must believe. We must obey. And we must abide in the vine. We are the branches and he is the vine. We must abide in Jesus. And so, 
the scripture that was read into your hearing by Brother Little was the scripture that was selected for our reading, our hearing, our consideration, a familiar passage where Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. God don't want no spectators. God is waiting on us to be hearers and doers of his word. God is waiting on us to take up our cross and deny ourselves. God didn't promise every day would be easy. A Sunday school picnic. Howdy, howdy. It's going to be some days when there's going to be some rain. It's going to be some days when there's going to be some snow. Amen. But we have God's promise. And the promise is this. Eternal life. 1 John 2 and 25. We know that the storms of life are going to test us. Reminds me of that poem by Langston Hughes where he wrote, Mother and Son, Mother to Son. Life for me ain't been no crystal stair. You know the poem. It's had taps in it and places where they, the steps were bare. But Langston Hughes writes, the mother encourages her son, I've been climbing, you keep climbing. Twists and turns. Keep climbing, don't stop. And so, life for mama, life for grandmama, life for big mama, wasn't no crystal stair, but we got to keep climbing. We got to tell our children, I'm climbing. I'm not going to stop climbing. And so, God didn't promise us that life would be a crystal stair. Sometimes, some days you're going to be thirsty, some days you're going to be hungry. But I know what my Bible says. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Amen. Jesus told a Samaritan woman at the well, and he said, I am the living water. I can give you water that will flow from your belly, and it, you will never be thirsty. Amen. When you find yourself thirsty for water, with your back against the wall. When you feel like giving up. When you are in deep, deep trouble. And the worst is about to come. And you are looking for a shelter in a time of storm. You need, when you need God to hide you in the blood. When you need God to hide you in the cleft of the rock like he did Moses. Amen. When you need God because you don't know mm -hmm. what to do next, yeah. Yeah. you know God's word tells you, all right? Amen. Psalm chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, <laughs> blessed is the man. You know what to do. Did you come to church today looking for Jesus? Did you come to church today looking for a Savior? I know some of you are suffering. I talked to some of you this week. 
I see Sister Sheila. I know some of you all are suffering. You came today looking for the old ship of Zion. You came today looking for the church that Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I know. Did you come to church today to be a spectator or did you come to church today to be a lively stone? Did you come to church today to be connected one to another? To be involved one with another? All of us, whether we realize it, accept it or not, all of us are connected to the Holy Spirit. All of us are connected to each other. If the Holy Spirit dwells in you, Susie, if the Holy Spirit dwells in you, Brother Jackson, if the Holy Spirit dwells in me, if Jesus dwells in me and I dwell in him and Jesus dwells in God, we're all connected by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the question is, have you gotten involved in the church? Or have you just been a spectator? Do you have a witness or a testimony today of how good Jesus has been to you? Are you looking for Jesus today? If you have run out of hope, if you have run out of power, if you have run out of faith, if your enthusiasm has gotten weak, if your prayers are getting less effective and less frequent and shorter and shorter and you feel like you want to say, Father, I stretch out my hands to thee. No other help do I know. I don't know what you may be facing this day, but we only have one father who's able, he's able. He's the creator. He made everything out of nothing and hung it on something. Father, I stretch out my hands to thee. No other help do I know. You know what time it is, church? It's time you open your heart Amen. to God. That's what time it is. You turn your heart away from the world and sin and turn your heart to God. And believe the word and believe what Jesus said to his disciples way back in A.D. 33. I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father except by me. Amen. Say amen when you can. Amen. We came together today because we all have something in common. Yes, I wanted to use an analogy and paint a picture. We come together today because we all have the same disease. We come together today because we all need the vaccine for the disease called sin. We come together today because we all need the blood of Jesus Christ. You understand what I'm trying to say, church? We come together today. We all need to confess our sins to Jesus. We all need to pray for the Holy Spirit to come down and guide us. Amen. We all need God's grace and mercy. Amen. We are all lively stones, but God has no use for anything dead. 
You see, we don't need a dead cow, a dead bull, a dead pigeon, a dead dove. God has no use for anything dead. God wants us not only to worship, but also to be a light in a world of darkness. God wants us to be a witness in a world of sin, deceit, lie. We came together today to have a little talk with Jesus. We sing that song I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And little, a little cloud of doubt. Amen. May I delight a day. But we came to have a little talk with Jesus today. So that's why I'm hoping and I'm trusting and I'm praying that we didn't come today to be spectators. We came today to be lively stone. We are members of the body of Christ. We are all connected. We are like a brick in the wall, holding up the wall. Amen? You know what time it is? It's time to get closer to God. It's time to get closer to one another in Christian fellowship and love. And so my prescription today from the pulpit is wait on the Lord. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Don't give up. Don't give out. And don't give in. But wait on the Lord. None of us is perfect. We all need to confess our sins and say, Lord, I haven't been perfect. I haven't been all I could have been. I haven't been all you wanted me to be. I haven't been all that I should have been. But thank you, Lord, that I was not what I was before I went down into the water and obeyed the gospel and contacted the blood and my sins were washed away and I received forgiveness of sins and I received the Holy Spirit my soul was sealed by the down payment, the inheritance of my salvation, which is the Holy Spirit. Donald J. Trump can't save me. He can't save you. He can only save himself if he accepts, if he hears the truth and accepts the truth, if he believes, if he, ab if he obeys, and if he abides. Say amen when you can. There may be somebody today under the weak sound of my voice who does not know the Lord and the pardoning of his sin. You come by hearing the gospel, by believing it with all your heart. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You come by hearing the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then you must repent. God at one time winked at man's ignorance, but now calls all men everywhere unto repentance. You come by confession. You must confess the sweetest name given to men. There is no other name given on earth from heaven by which we may be saved, and that is the name of the Son of God, Jesus. The preacher will ask you the confession. Do you believe? That's all it takes. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God? That's all it takes. And then we will take you and we will baptize you in water. You have to be crucified to your sins in water. Just as Jesus was crucified on Calvary's cross. You must die to your sins in the water. And then you come up out of the water. That old Adam is crucified. You come out of the water a new man. As Brother Jackson said, a new creature in Christ. 
You cannot join the church that Christ died for. You must be born again by the water and the spirit. You must be born into the family of God, Amen. the kingdom of God. You must be baptized in water for the remission of your sins. Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then you must walk in the light as Jesus is the light. You must walk until you can't walk no more. And when you walk the last mile of the way, you won't be alone. Jesus will be with you. Jesus will be waiting to receive you into his kingdom for which he died. He came down to this earth, left glory, walked among men, and made a way out of no way. Salvation today is the acceptable day of salvation. Salvation can be yours this day. If you will but surrender your life, choose Jesus as your personal Savior. Choose the promise of Jesus. And then everything will be all right. You can go down into the water. You can get right, come up out of the water. Everything will be all right. You can choose the promise or you can choose the penalty. There are two places to go after death. One of them is the smoking section. The other one is the non-smoking section. I want to be with Jesus. I want to be with Jesus. Where do you want to spend eternity? Eternity is a long time. Where do you want to live in eternity? Today. Don't put it off until it's everlasting and too late. Today. Jesus is waiting. The Holy Spirit is waiting. God is sitting on his throne waiting for you. Won't you come? Just as you are. Won't you come? As we stand and sing a song of encouragement. Show me the way. Show me. Show me the way. Jesus is waiting. Won't you come? The invitation has been extended. Won't you come? Jesus is waiting. He's knocking on the door of your heart. Won't you come? Tomorrow is not promised. Won't you come today while the blood is still running warm in your veins? Show me the way, won't you show me the way, Lord, show, show me, show me the way. I said I'm down here, Lord. Is there one? And I need. Is there one who will put Christ on in baptism? Is there one willing to die that he may live in eternity with Jesus? Won't you come? And Lord, I, I am your child. I said I'm down here, Lord, and I need your power, so show, show me, show 
Let us bow. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, once again, we're thanking you for your mercy and your grace. Lord, we love you. We adore you. We ask, Lord, that you hear our humble prayer. Lord, we say thank you for the privilege of once again coming together and worshiping you in spirit and in truth. We pray, Lord, for those who are sick and afflicted among us, those members of the household of faith who were unable to assemble today. Lord, we're praying that you will touch them with your finger of healing. And if it be thy will to raise them up from a sick bed of affliction. Lord, we're praying for all those who are in hospitals and nursing homes and, yes, in prisons too, Lord. We're praying, Lord, that the gospel light will shine on them too, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all your blessings, putting a roof over our head, food on our table, a reasonable portion of health and strength, and loving us so much that you gave your only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so, Lord, we're asking for strength. We're asking, Lord, that you forgive us for our transgressions and iniquities and for falling short of your glory. We're asking, Lord, that you watch over our families and that you protect our children as the devil walks about as a roaring lion to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. We're praying, Lord, that a peace which path passeth all understanding may be ours, that you will grant us peace in our lives. Lord, grant us peace in this city. Lord, grant us peace in this world. And so, Lord, we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor, and we confess our sins. And we pray, Lord, that we may grow, that you will allow us to serve you as we grow in faith, that we may serve you and be profitable servants, that we may witness to the world that salvation is in the name of Jesus Christ, that you are the true and living God. And so, Lord, we end this prayer, but we pray that we will not end our lives in your sight. We pray, Lord, that you will Grant us our request that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask this prayer. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, Amen and Amen. Good morning, church. Didn't Elder Martin do a great job this morning? Great job. One thing about it, I got my uniform on. I just hope you have yours on. But I'm coming to you at this point of our service. This is when we give money. This enables us to care for the church needs. We are incredibly thankful for those who give regularly. Many of you diligently bring your money offering every week and give online. I want to thank those who are online for their giving. We really do appreciate it here at Chatham. But sometimes life gets wild sickness, we travel, we leave the church, other things come up. But we have to feel that the Lord is first in our life. Because we wouldn't be here if it weren't for him. You wouldn't have probably had food this morning. You wouldn't have been able to put on your clothes this morning. Sometimes we think of all the things that we need and want 
and forget all about where you came from to get to where you are by his blessing. Now, we got three weeks to go, December the 1st. So far, we have raised only $11,000. Our goal is twenty-five. He said, well, Elder Horton, what do you mean? Why is that? I just want to tell you, when we made it this far, we have gotten our AC and heating system, it will be paid off. It will be paid off. We started out at $80,000. $80,000. If we can get to that $25,000, we sing hallelujah. Give God thanks for him. And we're asking that each member you can go ahead and give $300. And we look at our leadership to give $600 to help out in this homecoming. This is going to be a great homecoming. And the reason why I say that, I've been on a call with the homecoming committee for the last couple of weeks. And they're getting it ready for you. You know, the food is going to be good. Bobby has not gave me the what's on the menu, but I know it's going to be good. Also, we're going to be asking the, if you would, after service, stay and get a message from the homecoming committee because they're going to need some help from all of us. Our food pantry, just want to throw that in. This food pantry has helped people every week. Some two, three hundred people may come in here asking for food. This is for those that are online also. I want you to hear me. We have nothing but women pretty much down there on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday morning. They are asking if we can give a hand, especially the men, if we can give a hand to help feed the hungry, those who are in need. And they're talking about having some on Wednesday morning. They get food in from, I guess he can be here from 8 to Friday they get food in, if you can be here from 8.30 to 10. Saturday morning when the crowd is out there lined up down the alley waiting, if you can be here from 7 to 10. These are the things as a church we need to do. Give and receive. The Lord will bless you, not only for your giving, but for your service also. This is what a church is all about. So, are you in with me? Are we going to make that 25000 Just get said. Say it with courage. Courage. You're going to do your part. And I want you to invite your family. Have them come. Because we are preparing for two to 250 people. We are preparing for so anybody that comes, we're going to feed you. We're going to have you be warm, and we're going to entertain you. This is going to be a great thing of a homecoming, bringing all those back home to visit the church. That means you, whoever is online, come out to church. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, help us bring our offering with an eager heart not as a comparison with others, but as an act of worship to you. May we find comfort and desire in what the strength that you have given us to do the things in your name. May your presence be with, with us every hour of the day, Lord. And Lord, help us, guide us, 
In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. If y'all can pass the basket, please. I know that my Redeemer lives and ever prays for me. I know eternal life he gives from sin and sorrow free. I know that my Redeemer lives I know eternal life he gives. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. He will that I should wholly be in word and thought in deed. Then I his holy face may see run from this earth life free. I know that my Redeemer lives. I know eternal life he gives. I know. come to another part of our service called communion where the disciples came together the first day of the week to break bread. This is instituted in Acts 20 verse 7. I will read for you 1 Corinthians 11 chapters the 23rd through the 26th verse. And it reads, For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks he broke it and said, Hey, eat. This is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in the remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you should show it all step until he come. Wherefore, who should ever should eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Then we pray. Heavenly Father, bless this bread that represents your broken body and this cup that represents your split blood. And may we not take it in an unworthy manner, but to glorify and edify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may take the cup. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word, it sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth, oh, and oh, how I Jesus, 
sin. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Good morning, Chatham. Just a few brief announcements before we get out of here today. But it's so good to see everyone. But uh, of course, we are always praying for our uh, sick and shut in. Um, so I do want to add a few names to the list today. So praying for Brother Elder Stubbs and then also for the Higgins family. Additionally, we are extending our sympathies for Sister Ora Dean for the passing of her daughter in law. The um, visitation for that will be Friday, November 15th at the Southwest Funeral Home from 2 to 6 p.m. Um, and then the service will be Saturday, November 16th at Memorial of Faith. And that is at 10 Monument of Faith. Monument of Faith. Sorry about that. Good job. Sorry about that. Monument of Faith. Um, and that starts at 10 a.m. So everyone here in the auditorium, you can see it up on the boards as well. So again, visitation starting Friday from 2 to 6, and the funeral taking place on Saturday. Service begins at 11. I do want to um, extend a happy Memorial, not happy Memorial Day, but happy Veterans Day to our um, veterans tomorrow. So I know a few of us served. So again, happy Veterans Day tomorrow. The Education Department's Activity Committee and the Food Pantry is going to be sponsoring Holiday of Hope, a community service project. We're requesting donations of socks, t-shirts, caps, gloves, and coats. So please bring new or slightly used items to the church on Sunday. So again, that is the Holiday of Hope, a community service project that is sponsored by the Education Department and also the Food Pantry. And it's been mentioned so many times, but we are coming up so quickly on our homecoming. So again, we want to make sure we're extending invitations November 1st, the December 1st, the attire and the colors are emerald green and metallic gold. So you see it up behind us, but we're looking forward to having a good time. So let's extend those invitations to get our family here. Also coming up in December, the Chicago Land United Bible Class that's going to be held at the Harvey Church of Christ this time. So that's Sunday, December 8th at 3 p.m. Lunch will be served following worship service. So we just had the United Land Bible class here at Chatham. So let's make sure we're going out supporting as well over at Harvey. And again, that does lead us up into the Crusade of Christ. But that's next summer, July 26th through 30th in Detroit. So reminders to mark your calendar. The lodging will take place at the Westing, Southfield, Detroit, 1500 Town Center. So again, that's also in the bulletin, and it's going to be up on the boards throughout the rest of the year. But we are just happy to see everyone. And uh, that was a great message today by Brother Ron Martin. So I hope we can you know, keep that in our mind as we go through the rest of our day especially as we enter into the holiday season where I know it's always supposed to be about joy, but, you know, seasonal depression, all that stuff comes and it goes up and down. So let's make sure we're reaching out, wrapping our arms around one another, really being a true Chatham family that I'm proud to call myself a member of. But uh, thank you, Chatham. We'll see you next time. Let the church say amen. amen. You know, we certainly appreciate that message by yeah. Brother Martin. He just did just a, did a magnificent job. And Doc, I, I can't preach like that. I mean, he really did a wonderful job preaching here this morning. Uh, we also want to pray for Sister Barbara Huggins, who lost her grandson, 18 years old. And the funeral is going to be held here on the 23rd of this month. It's Sister Barbara Huggins lost a son, 18 years old. Yes, he's family right here. Yes. 
grandson. That's your son. That's, that's your grandson here. And I'm here talking about your, your grandson. That was your grandson. So stand up again. We want to pray for her. She's lost her, grand, her grandson here. And it's one of the twins, too. She had, they had twins, and they all grew up around here. He had this church right here. We want to keep praying for you. Okay, Sister Barbara. And we're praying for the entire family here. Also, we happen to have Brother Banks back with us who had surgery and now he's 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 looking good and uh he got his stick but 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 he's still looking good here. Yeah. And we want to pray for Sister Yvonne Newsom who will be going for surgery on the nineteenth of this month as well. We want to keep praying for her. Also we have a list of Crystal Wilkinson. Wilkinson. You don't want to sit this here up. But, oh, okay, stand up for Brother Harrison. All right, I got that. This is the daughter right here. We're going to let you say it, okay? Tell it. I know God, but I want my daughter to get to know God. My daughter's young, and she needs prayer. I'm crying because I'm happy, and I want her to get closer to God. My baby's young, and I don't mind sharing. But right now, my baby needs a kidney, and I want her to live life because she's young. And I just want God to just heal her body, and I just want all the prayers. And I just want her to get a kidney, and I hope I can match for her. Yeah. I just want prayers for my baby. Let her know life is worth living, and God is good. It's not nothing he will not do for you. And I want you to keep your faith, Cheyenne. Keep your faith. God is able. Amen. Isn't that a mother? You can't be the real mother. I'm telling you this. Stand up, baby. She, and, and we believe with prayer you're going to get that kidney, all right? Just have faith that uh, and we believe in truth. He says, uh, ask and it's going to be given. And we have the faith of a mustard seed. He said, God said you can move mountains. And uh, nothing like a mother. Let me give you a hug. Stamp your mother. Give her a hand. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. We're going to be praying. We're going to be praying for your daughter, okay? Yeah. She, she pretty just like mom. All right, here? Yeah. All right. We're we going to be praying for her. And sometimes, you know, we don't know what people are going through within life. Uh, people are going through some difficult times and some tough situations. And, uh, and sometimes we ask the question, where is God? Uh... Regardless, as I told my sister the other day, how much we go to church, and how many times we take the Lord's Supper, when things can get so tough sometimes. You get like Job. Job said, I've gone to the east. I've gone to the west. He said, I've gone to the north, and I've gone to the south. And said, I can't find him. Say, where is God? All of us get to a point. We wonder about real life. But God is still on the throne. God is still real. And God is, God is. And that's why David said, the Lord still is my shepherd. And I shall not want. God still is real. And when we've got two, have gone to the east, to the north, to the west, and can't find God. He's still with us. And so Paul said, in him we live. In him what? We move. And in him we have our very existence. So we're going to keep on praying and keep on talking to the Lord. Do we have any visitors with us today? You know, a visitor, but I'm glad to have you back here. Would you like to have a word to say?
contributed something to it. So uh, because I love the Lord, and I love you all too. Amen. 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 Do we have other Do we have any other visitors with us today? We're just glad to have all of you here with us today. And that's, is there someone else I see? I'm sorry. Let me, Brother Harrison, hear what you're saying. Marilyn? Okay, we're so happy to have you with us today. Glad to have you with us today. Do we have other visitors? Again, may God bless each and every one of you. And as we get ready for homecoming, we're going to have a great time. We also want to give some honor to our eldership on that day. Dr. Penn will be our speaker. We're going to have just a wonderful time. We're asking you to bring your entire family and friends. We're going to have, celebrate and just have a glorious, glorious time in the Lord on that particular day. Are we going to have a good time, church? They said, praise God, you know. Uh, when you've gone through, like this family is going through with right now, when you come to the house of the Lord, you can say, praise the Lord and mean it. Let's say, praise the Lord this morning. And if we really mean it, let's say, hallelujah. Come on, we're not afraid. Let's say, hallelujah. And that's why David said, let the saints of God say so. And if the saints of God speak out, Things, mountains will get out of our way. Okay, may God bless each and every one of you. And as I told Brother Martin the other day, he mentioned about Trump. I said, the earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, it belongs to God. Everything. So God has truly been good to each and every one of us, and we are truly and absolutely unequivocally blessed to be here today. All right, we're going to have one of those good old songs right here. And this Brother Banks with the stick is going to give us a dismissal prayer today. The come is far by faith. We have come this far by faith. Oh, leaning on. And every day you know that we're trusting. I know the Lord never failed, never failed, never failed me yet, and we're singing, oh, 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 can't turn around, we've come this far by faith. Amen. Amen. We come this far by faith, we sure did, or well, sure do. Uh, before we dismiss, I just want to say some things. Appreciate all the uh, calls, the cars, uh, the uh, concerns that I, about my health. My health was fine. I just had some physical condition, which was a knee replacement. So that came out good. Um, I have some swelling. I'm still dealing with uh, bending. I'm going through therapy now. So uh, hopefully in a little while I'll be able to move around a little bit better and get rid of this. Doc said just stick here. But for right now, no shame in the game. I need this stick. I'm going to use this stick. Uh, the other thing that I want to say, uh, I don't want to name a lot of names because I want to know I'm going to miss some people. But there were five people who was uh, definitely uh, in the process of me getting to where I'm at today. One is my wife. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she, she was there through thick and thin. She was there to beg and call. She did everything that had to be done that I needed to be done. And uh, I didn't go any further with that. I let her do what, what she had to do. Sister Harrison and your sister. They, they send me cars, as, as, I, as I know she would, but it's just the, what, the, what the cars said. Uh, I was so appreciative of that. Most of all, I want to say, uh, you know, as Christians, we, we have to do things that we need to do with each other. As we talked about the fact that we want to love each other, do things that we, we just need to be doing because we're Christians. And I want to give those kudos to Brother Jackson and Sister Marie Jackson. It's all right. Amen. They've been taking me to... Uh, Yeah. 
I didn't want to do this. So appreciative of it. Uh, and he's still doing it. And when I told uh, Maria, I said, you don't have to do this today. We're Christian, what we're supposed to do. We do this. We're supposed to be doing this. And this is what we talked about in class this morning. This is the same thing. Mm. I'm crying, but, but I'm all right. It's just that it's so appreciated of what they're doing and what people have done and they have said. And it's not, nothing I have that was life threatening, but it's something that I was going through. I know I mentioned it a lot of times and finally got it did, but uh, I'm still going through some stuff now, with that now. So keep me in your prayer, and hopefully I'll, I'll come out all right in the end. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, again, we come thank you to the Lord. Thank you for another day. Thank you for allowing us to come here to hear the message this morning by Brother Ron Martin. Powerful message that he's preached. Hoping and praying that we take those things that he has talked about and have, have preached to us this morning, that we take them out into the world and tell those who do not know thee. Not to let things of Tuesday get into our way, but, but, but th all this is in God's plan. These things are going to work out in the end, and it's going to be, be for the better for all of us. It's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen.